Yin threw the lingerie her younger sister had given her and stared at her with disappointment. A pole dancer? Are you crazy? Sis, please help me. This is why I always wanted you to come home. But you chose that guy with no future. And look, he abandoned you. Yin pulled at her hair, feeling dizzy from her anger. And you want me to replace you tonight? Are you insane? I'm a doctor, Minji. I, I owe my life to my audience tonight. Don't be ridiculous. Sis, I, don't cry, you won't be able to explain yourself properly. Yin sighed and sat next to Minji who was still trembling from crying. Yin scrutinized her, wondering how her sister ended up as a pole dancer. She silently recalled how Minji, once so loving, had changed during her time studying abroad. She constantly rebelled against their parents and chose to leave the family to be with her boyfriend. And now, Yin was faced with Minji in such an unexpected situation. Tell me slowly, I'll listen. I was pregnant. Yin held back her emotions, feeling that her medical training had given her the ability to maintain her composure. My boyfriend left with another girl. I fought with him. He kicked my stomach and I felt pain there. I realized I was having a miscarriage. He left me when he saw the blood, and that's when I met a man who happened to be passing by. He took me to the hospital. He covered all my medical expenses until I recovered but I owed him. I promised to dance in front of him in lingerie, but I failed because you hit me with your car. It's your fault for standing behind my car while I was parking. I called out to you, but you didn't hear me. Whatever your reason, you shouldn't stand behind a car when it's parked. Especially not in my blind spot. Were you trying to get yourself hurt, huh? Why would I hurt myself? Because of you. I couldn't keep my promise to dance for that man. I saved you. Yin stood glaring at a Minji and glancing at her leg before grimacing. Luckily, I'm a doctor, so I treated your leg. That's why you should replace me, sis. No thank you, I'm going home. If you don't replace me, I'm afraid he'll kill me sis. Believe me, he won't kill you. He, he's the owner of the bar where I dance. He's a mafia boss. He could kill me anytime. Hearing the word mafia, Yin felt sick to her stomach. She knew how dark the mafia world could be. If that was the case, her younger sister might actually be in danger. Finally, Yin sighed deeply. She grumbled inwardly. A fat, bald-headed man. Why did my younger sister have to owe her life to someone like him? Huh? Of all the men, why a mafia boss? Couldn't she owe a doctor or a cop instead? And why does repaying her debt have to mean being a pole dancer? Yin glanced at Minji, who was still crying out of fear. Her sister's incessant sobbing was driving her crazy. Sis, please. I don't want him to come after me and kill me. I won't show off my body. You and I are different. I don't want to be like this either. If you hadn't hit me earlier, I swear I'd be dancing now and not bothering you. Yin looked at the lingerie she had thrown and sighed loudly, making sure her sister heard. She picked up the lingerie and grimaced. How can something this less fabric be sold? How much is he paying? He said all my debts would be cleared with just one dance. You're insane. You've got debts and a runaway boyfriend. I'd love to hit you and say karma is real. But I'm holding back because I don't want my younger sister crying dramatically again. So, what are you offering me? Anything, sis. If you want me to go back to our parents' house, I'll go. You should have gone home right after you came back from abroad instead of renting this apartment. Fine, I'll go home tonight, apologize to our parents. Yin sighed in frustration, glaring at her. Then she stood and walked to the mirror. Lend me your scissors. My hair is longer than yours. Minji approached Yin and handed her the scissors. You don't actually need to cut it. Just say it's a wig. I'm a professional. Yin grabbed her long black hair, which reached her waist, and cut it with one swift snip. Now, it looks similar. She combed her now short hair, which only reached her chest. If I don't come back, call the police. I might have died there, protecting my idiot younger sister. Yin patted Minji's shoulder gently and hugged her tightly. You won't die. I'm sorry sis. Yin now realized that she had gone mad. She was an educated woman, and now she stood in front of the mirror, dressed in lingerie, with a terrifying expression on her face. She looked back at her white shirt and quickly put it on again. Her craziest decision was to replace her younger sister at work in a place as wild and terrifying as this, a man's world. Yin hated her sister, absolutely, but seeing her cry, she decided to help her. Damn it, she cursed in her heart repeatedly. Are you ready, Minji? Yin looked at a woman in red lingerie standing at the door of the changing room. Why are you wearing a shirt and glasses? I'm cosplaying, as a doctor. Hum, fitting. Next time, cosplay as a flight attendant. Yin laughed awkwardly and quickly approached her. She was finally going to do all of this. So, in which room will I? The boss is waiting for you on the fifth floor. Go ahead. His bodyguard will pick you up. 
Yin nodded helplessly. She cursed coming to this place once again, and sighed as her feet stopped in front of the elevator. Yin glanced left and right. There was no way out. Every point was guarded. Great hell. Yin's journey to the fifth floor took only 20 seconds. She laughed once because the time passed too quickly. Could the elevator be made to have a feature that takes minutes so she wouldn't arrive at the fifth floor this fast? Yin's arrival was immediately greeted by two men in black suits, who stared at her sharply before allowing her to pass and enter a room with a large door. I've been waiting for you. Yin raised her head a second after the large door was closed by the bodyguards. Her face stiffened and her body froze as she stared at the boss sitting there. Yin, my love. Yin laughed and adjusted her glasses. I never thought I'd meet my ex-boyfriend in a place as terrible as this. Yin walked closer to the man who was lounging there. I'm so glad I dumped you. I couldn't stand being cheated on. And now your plan for today is to watch Minji dance in front of you? Disgusting. The man looked at her and gave a very slight smile, so slight that Yin herself doubted whether he smiled or not. I'm glad it's you who came. Otherwise, I would be having fun with your younger sister in this room. I didn't expect to meet you in such a lovely situation. Me neither, it seems. Jungkook now stood up, and since he was taller than Yin, she had to look up to meet his gaze. You finally graduated and will become a doctor. Congratulations, baby. Thanks for the congratulations. Can I go home now? I'm not a good dancer. And I know you have plenty of dancers downstairs who can please your eyes. Hum. But it's your sister who owes me. Why should my dancers downstairs pay it off? Yin frowned and wanted to throw her high heels at her ex's head but she held herself back. Fine, I'll dance ballet in front of you. Yin said curtly. Jungkook now took a glass of wine and looked at Yin intensely. Dance. Yin raised an eyebrow. She had a plan to get back at her ex. Okay, be patient, Yin. First, I'll make his awake. Then I'll kick him so hard he can't walk and then I'll escape. Yin smiled, approached her ex and sat next to him. She started to wrap her arms around his neck and gently stroked his chest. Are you still as strong as before? It's been a year. I still remember how you kissed another girl enthusiastically right in front of me, acting as if I didn't exist. Yin could feel Jungkook's jaw tighten, whether from holding back his emotions, from being touched by her or from her words. Was she not good enough to satisfy you that you had to build a place like this, daddy? Her smile now clearly mocked and belittled the man in front of her. Suddenly, Jungkook grabbed her wrist and gripped it tightly. Then, he seized her chin, forcing her to look up at him. I told you before, listen to my explanation, Yin. Let go. No. He took her glasses and threw them hard to the floor, the sound echoing in the room. Then he stared at her sharply and suddenly kissed her forcefully, startling Yin, who almost screamed. She pushed his chest, but he held her with one hand. The man you saw back then wasn't me. I've tried contacting you many times but you always ignored me. He gently wiped away Yin's tears that she didn't realize had fallen. I never intended to cheat on you Yin. You know me best. Don't lie, Jungkook. Yin tried to free her hand. Even at the time, Yin didn't cry, but now she wanted to burst into tears, as if she really wanted to explode in front of him today. She could feel Jungkook's free hand now hugging her tightly. I swear, Yin, that was my cousin, who unfortunately looks very similar to me, especially if you only see his face from the side. Liar. I have proof. I wanted to show it to you, but you kept avoiding me. Why did you block my number? even after I spent almost a year there. I tried contacting you multiple times using different numbers, but eventually, you changed your phone number. I repeatedly came to your house, but your father kept throwing me out without listening to my explanation. I didn't want to confront your father and make him even angrier. I wanted to go to the hospital, but I didn't want to cause a scene there and embarrass you at your workplace. Why start this business if you're not lying? This has been my father's business for a long time. I'm just here to cover for him while he's on his honeymoon with my mother. If you're going to lie, think it through first, Jungkook. I don't believe you anymore. You even said you'd be having fun with my sister, right? Do you really think what you said earlier doesn't affect me? I saw you cheating in front of me, and today I almost found out that you'd have fun with my sister. Shh. Jungkook gently stroked her shoulder, then cradled her head against his chest, covered by his black shirt. He caressed her hair before kissing the top of her head. I actually asked Minji to trap you into coming here. I once asked her to force you to come to my office. I also had your sister's ex-boyfriend in prison for drug abuse and violence against women. I also arranged for my parents to go on their honeymoon this month. I did everything to meet you in person because you kept avoiding me since I returned from Italy. The one in the club back then was Gu Jean, my cousin. You suddenly sent a short message saying we were over. Don't you know how panicked I was in Italy? I didn't know anything and you accused me of secretly coming back to Seoul to cheat? If I could have come back immediately, 
I would have but my family business was on the brink of bankruptcy. My father had a heart attack from stress and I had to handle everything which is why I couldn't return to Seoul to see you. Why didn't you tell me your situation from the beginning? Because I'm not the type of man who complains in front of his woman. Jungkook smiled bitterly before finally releasing her from his embrace. He stepped back. I already paid off your sister's debt when she promised to bring you to me. But, can we continue this discussion later? Jungkook Jr. down there has been awake for a while now. Yin widened her eyes and glanced down. Sure enough, Jungkook Jr. was already up. Huh? I can't believe you. We've been fighting, and he's already awake just like that? What can I say? He knows you're here in front of me right now. Of course. He woke up because he missed you so much, baby. It's been almost a year since you pampered him, and no other woman has touched him since then, just so you know. I don't believe that no woman has pampered your Jungkook Jr. Are you really that loyal to me? You doubt me? I've been holding back all this time because I kept thinking of you. I pampered him myself with my own hand. Don't you know how tortured I've been this past year? Alright, let me pamper him now until he can sleep soundly. Yin finally approached Jungkook and kissed him intensely. Her hands began to pamper Jungkook and his junior. That night was truly a long night for them. After almost a year of Yin believing they had broken up, Jungkook never saw it that way. They spent the night rekindling the love and desire they had been holding back. Forgive me daddy, for not listening to you all this time. But tonight, I'll make up for my mistakes. I'll make you feel like you're flying. Yes, makes me fly. We'll have fun together, my cutie kitten.